Hey guys, what is Jax the Legend here today? I'm with the Minecraft tutorial slash information video. Now, in this week's tutorial slash information video, I'm going to be showing you guys why a redstone builds may not work. So in this video, I'm going to be going over why yours may not be working once you build it and things to check before you build it. Okay, so now let's have a look at some things to do before you start building. The first thing you want to do before you start building your redstone creation is know your platform. There is a Java platform, the Bedrock platform, and then the others, which include PS4, PS3, and Legacy Console Edition. For those who didn't know, Bedrock is Windows 10 Edition, PE, Xbox, and the Nintendo Switch Edition. It is really critical that you know this because there are a major difference between the redstone mechanics say in Java and Bedrock. Once you know your platform, check the video for the platform and version. Common places that you might be able to see this platform and version is in the title, the description, or in the video itself. Once you have done that, check the pinned comments for any updates. For example, my weed farm has a list in the pinned comments of all the fixes that you have to do depending on what version slash platform you are on. So if people read this, they will be saved a lot of headaches. Okay, so the next thing I beg you to do, and that is to always test your build on your creative world. This way, if there's a platform or version issue, you're going to be able to pick it up on that world before you go onto your survival world, gather all the resources, and find out that it doesn't work. Now let's have a look at some common mistakes that I often see people making on redstone builds. The first thing we're going to be looking at is a very easy mistake to make. I've even made this while making some of my doors. And this is having the redstone repeater facing the wrong way around. So our first little test area here shows the repeater facing the right way. So if I press this button, you can see our redstone lamp gets turned on for a second there. Because the redstone is flowing through the repeater and getting to our piston. However, if it's facing this way, you can see if I press this button, the redstone does not get through the repeater because this is the front side of it, not the back. So what we have to do is we have to break that and flip it around like this and then we can press that button and our whole redstone contraption shall work. Time to move on to the next thing, comparators. So in front of me we have an array, an array of different comparators. Here we have a regular comparator clock system. And right now you can see it is turned on to subtraction mode, meaning that red dot is turned on. However, if I right click this again, you can see it is turned off. Now if this is turned off and I flick this lever, you can see it does not create a clock at all and the redstone current just stays there. But if I turn it back onto subtraction mode by right clicking it again, it creates a clock and the redstone flashes on and off. So always double check that if it's meant to be turned on, make sure you have it turned on and vice versa. The next one is placing your comparator the wrong way. If you have it placed like this and you flick your redstone lever, the comparator does not detect that there's a redstone output there, so nothing happens and the redstone stays off. So again, all you have to do is break it and turn it around and then turn it on for there to be a clock. Make sure you're powering your comparator from the back of this wide edge here of your area. So instead of powering it from out here on the redstone and closer to this sort of shorter edge, we want to break that lever and come behind here and power it and turn it on for a redstone clock. So make sure if you're trying to move say a lever or a button that you know it's going to work where you're going to move it. Time to move on to the differences between hoppers, not hoppers, droppers and dispensers. These two redstone components, the dropper and the dispenser, are used a lot in farm builds but a lot of people get them mixed up because they do look very similar. So the dropper here has a sort of triangle mouth here and the dispenser here has a circle. That is a way you need to tell the difference of them if you've placed them already and you can't be bothered breaking them. Okay, so here we have a simple item transportation system. So we have a dropper on one side and the dispenser on the other. So if I grab out some items, say some sandstone here, and put them into the bottom of this dropper, 32, you can see it's all going into this large chest here. However, if I grab 32 sand and put it into the bottom of this dispenser, you can see it's just getting thrown out and glitching through the dispensers, like that, and is not going into this chest at all. 
So in a transportation system such as the one that I use on my wheat farm, you must not get the dropper and the dispenser mixed up because trust me, it is very easy to do this but it will cause major problems with your redstone system. Okay, staying on the topic of droppers and dispensers, let's have a look at the difference of them while dispensing, say, a bucket of water. Okay, so as you can see, if I press this button and when there's water inside of this dropper, the dropper will just drop the water bucket. However, if I press this when there's water inside of the dispenser, the, the dispenser will actually dispense the water and let it flow. So depending on what build, um, what build you're doing, you might need to use different things, so make sure you don't get them mixed up again. Moving on to the next thing, repeater ticks. Okay, so here we have a simple double piston extender, where the repeaters are on two ticks, so that's one click, and four ticks, so that's three clicks. So if I press this button, you can see my double piston extender works completely fine. But if I walk past this and say accidentally click one of these repeaters, adding another tick to it, and then press the button, you can see it no longer works, because it no longer retracts the block. So, you need to make sure you have your build on the correct amount of ticks, because a lot of my builds I've gone through and tested all the repeaters to make sure all the timing is correct. Okay, so now it's time to move over to one tick system. So behind me we have a one tick system, and if you're new to redstone, you're probably like Jax. What is a one tick system? Well, let me show you. As you can see, we have a regular piston here with a piece of sand on top of it. So if I press this button, a very short signal gets sent through this repeater, meaning that this sticky piston drops this block and doesn't fully bring it all the way down. But if I press it again, it retracts it. So if you see one of these systems in one of uh, in a redstone tutorial, like my campfire door tutorial, it means it will not work for your bedrock world. And sadly, there is no simple fix, so you might want to check the pinned comments or on um, the description for any sort of updates or extra tutorials, say for a bedrock version of it. A great example of this is with my staircase door, because I've done multiple versions of that. I've done 1.13, 1.14, and a bedrock version. Okay, so now it's time to move over to your observer. So behind me, I have a double piston extender that only works on Java because it uses a one tick system that I showed you before. But it's also using an observer right here. So right now, this observer needs to be facing this way so it detects the change here and powers this block here. However, right now, I haven't got it that way because as you can see, the dot is here and the redstone current comes out of that dot, meaning the face must be at the top. The face is the face, the face is the face of the block that detects the block change. So this has to be um, the face in the right way, like that. So you can now see the face is looking at that um, repeater for any block changes. So now you can see it fully works. Now some people get worried about the facing of the sides, say so if you see this arrow but not this side or vice versa. This does not matter, the only thing that matters is that the face down here is facing the right way and the dot here is also facing the right way. So again, if your resident build isn't working and it's using quite a few observers, make sure to go through and check every single one of them. Now to move on to something that I've been getting a lot of questions about, bubble columns. Now these can be pretty confusing at times because of the mechanics of them, so let's have a look at them. Over here to our left, we have a fully functioning bubble column, so when I open these gates and go through, I get shot up the top and I can hop out. However, the one directly next to it is not working, so if I walk in here, I just stay down at the bottom. This is because none of these blocks except for the very top one are source blocks, they're all just flowing water, therefore bubbles cannot be created. This, this happened because I placed one block at the top and let it run down. To create a bubble column, there are two ways. I'll go through both of them. For the first way, you'll just need a few water buckets and some soul sand, one soul sand for my way, for my build here. You wanna fly, hop down to the bottom and place a piece of soul sand. Then place a water bucket, go up to the next way by holding W or it'll just shoot you up. Place another one and then do that for the next one and the next one, and you'll see you have a fully functioning bubble column. A water bucket must be placed on every single layer. So here, 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 and here. However, this can be pretty slow and tedious if you've got a giant bubble column. So that's why we have the other way. The next way of doing it uses 
like kelp, but less water buckets because it only uses one. But it still uses a soul sand. Okay, start by going up to the top of your water column and placing one at the very top, a bucket of water, and letting it flow all the way down. Then go down there and place kelp going all the way up. You can use bone meal to grow this, or you can wait for it to grow. And you can see it is now at the very top like that. Now what you have to do is break that kelp down and place, replace the bottom block with soul sand. You need to make sure this bottom block here is a block that your kelp can grow on by the way. So now you've replaced it with soul sand and you can see the bubble column is fully functioning. This works because the kelp automatically makes every block a source block as it grows through it. If you have a bubble column leading into a hopper system that looks like this, such as in my spider farm, you need to take something else into account. That is, that when making your source box, this block very, at the very top here cannot be a source block because otherwise the spiders will drown. So what I've done is I've made every one a source block, so I've made this one a source block, this one, this one, and this one a source block, but I haven't made this one here, and that is very important. So let's make that now. So I'm just going to grab all the materials and make that now. Okay, so now I'm just going to build a tube up. Okay, so now we just place a ring around here and we can place the water in. So remember, place a flowing bucket of water here, and not at the very top, but there. Then place kelp going all the way up, just up to there. Then break this and replace it with soul sand. Now that you've done that, you need to place your water bucket going across the top like this. And you can see it only it stops here. So what you'll have to do is place a block there, then break it and then place a bucket of water on where you just broke your block. So you still have a fully functioning water system that pushes you up and pushes you over to the hopper. I see a lot of people getting building this incorrectly, so in case of a spider, in the case of a spider spawner, their spiders will drown, but if say, you're moving items, your items will despawn and won't move correctly because you've got this water block here, which will create almost an infinite water source. Now, if you still have a problem with one of my builds and none of these have fixed it, make sure to leave a comment on the video and make sure to supply me with loads, as much information as you can. Say your, your, um, your version, your platform, and say if like a piston isn't extending properly, that you notice all your bubble column isn't working and you can't seem to fix it. Now that I've said that, that is going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and remember to sub it up a subscribe showing you. I'd really appreciate the support if you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys later. Peace. And remember, stay carbonated.